Hello. In this video, we will explore the concept of limits of two variable function. This is Satbir Singh Malli. We study the limit of one variable function in calculus 1. Remember the notation. We write limit as x approaches to x of 0 of a given function f is equal to l. If we can make our function f arbitrary close to l by choosing suitable x close to x of 0. Let's look at this picture. One can see as x approaches to x of 0, either from left or right, the corresponding value of x is getting closer and closer to l. In other words, when the distance between x and x of 0 is getting small, the corresponding distance between f and l is also getting small. Now let's do an example. Limit as x approaches to 0 of sin x over x. This is a very interesting example. Look, can we plug 0 in our function? Answer is no, since our function is not defined at 0. But I think you remember, as x gets very very close to 0, that quotient sin x over x gets closer and closer to 1. And we say that limit is equal to 1. Let's do this one more time. This time, we pick some values near 0 and plug them into the function. For example, x is equal to 0 0.1. This number is close to 0. When I plug this into sin x over x, this gives me 0 0.998 a number close to 1. Let's even get more close to 0. How about x is equal to 0 0.01? And the function value at this point is 0 0.9998, which is even better. So this convinces us that the limit of sin x over x as x approaches to 0 is equal to 1. Next, before we move to the limit of two variable function, let's understand the major difference between limit of one variable function and two variable function. In one variable, the point x of 0 lies on a line. So you can approach this value only in two directions, positive value of x or negative value of x. In the case of two variables, the point x of 0, comma y of 0 lies in a plane. So it can be approached in any direction along different path. In fact, this difference makes the limit of two variable function a bit more complicated. Before I present you the definition of limit, I have to look at another idea called disk in the plane. Alright, let me define what a disk is. Here is the definition of open disk. Fix your point x of 0, comma y of 0 in the plane, then the open disk centered at that point x0, y0 is the set of all points x, comma y whose distance from the fixed point is less than delta. That will be an open disk in the plane. It is basically a circle not the boundary though, because it is open. However, it includes all the interior points. It will be closed disk if we replace the inequality less with inequality less or equal. Alright, with the idea of disk in hand, now we can define the definition of limit. Here is the definition of limit of two variable function. Look. The notation is similar. Limit as x, comma y approaches to the fixed point x of 0, comma y of 0 of the given function f is equal to l if for every epsilon positive there correspond a positive delta such that the distance between the function f and the number l is less than epsilon whenever the point x, comma y is in that disk. Let's explore this definition with an animation. 
we say limit as x comma y approaches to the fixed point x of 0 comma y of 0 of the given function f is equal to l when the arbitrary point x comma y enter in the lower disk from any direction the corresponding value of the function f must enter in the upper disk in the same time next let's do some examples compute some limits this is the fun part here is a function of two variable it is a quotient with the denominator x square y and denominator x square plus y square and we ask what is the limit as x comma y approaches to 1 comma 2 there is no problem here since at x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2 our function is well defined so we can plug in x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2 in our function and after some simplification we get 2 fifth so we say that the limit of our function is 2 fifth at that point now let's move one step up this time we ask what is the limit as x comma y approaches to 0 0 of the same function look x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 is the bad point for our function since function is not defined at this value so we are in trouble you see i can't really plug in x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 into the function to compute the limit but how about some value near 0 0 like for example x is equal to 0 0.1 comma y is equal to 0 0.1 our function is defined at that value and if I plug in this value I get that my function value is 0 0.05 let's choose one more value which is even more close to 0 0 how about x is equal to 0 0.01 and y is equal to 0 0.01 after plugging in we see the function value at this point is 0 0.005 so both the observation suggest as if the limit of this function exists it should be is equal to 0 however i can't be sure about this statement remember a point in the plane can be approached in many direction and my answer is only based by approaching from one direction which is y is equal to x so i can't be sure that the limit of this function exists at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 next by using the squeeze principle we will show that the limit of our function is exist and is equal to 0 at that point 0 comma 0 so according to the definition of limit we need to show that the distance between the function and the value 0 is approaching to 0 as the distance between the point x comma y and 0 0 is getting close to 0 so let's take a look at this term which is the distance between our function and the number 0 which is also the absolute value of x square y divided by x square plus y square since the quotient x square divided by x square plus y square is always less than or equal to 1 this implies the absolute value of x square y divided by x square plus y square is less than or equal to the absolute value of y now look at this term x approaches to 0 and y approaches to 0 in particular we can say that y approaches to 0 if y approaches to 0 the absolute value of y is also approaching to 0 putting all together we have absolute value of our function x square y divided by x square plus y square minus 0 is approaching to 0 as the distance between x comma y and 0 0 is approaching to 0 this conclude that the limit of our function is equal to 0 now let's take an example of limits that does not exist here is the function x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square and then all square 
and we ask what is the limit as x comma y approaches to 0 comma 0. Notice at 0 0 our function is not defined so it is a bad point. Now let me convince you that a limit at that point does not exist. Remember we say we can approach the point along various path and if the limit exists it must be same along every path. So I'm gonna pick couple of path and compute the limit along these path and get different answer. For example, if I assume y is 0, that means I am approaching along x axis. In that case, the expression simplify to x square minus 0 square divided by x square plus 0 square and then all square. x square over x square is 1 and 1 square is 1. So along this path, our limit is 1. How about the path y is equal to x? Now my expression is x square minus x square divided by x square plus x square. Denominator is x square minus x square which is 0 and 0 square is 0. So along that path my limit is 0. Here is a picture of that function. If you are approaching origin along the path y is equal to 0, you are always 1 along the entire trip. However, if you go along the path y is equal to x, you are always 0 along this path. So these limits don't agree. We find two paths going to region producing different limits. So the limit does not exist. That's all for now. In the next video, we will learn a different approach of computing these limits by using polar coordinate. Stay tuned.